Which player do you think is poised to make a big jump in their second half of the season? I mean, Jamari Butler is kind of a low-hanging fruit, I'd say, um, if he can get healthy. I think you could see him make an impact for Nebraska, and, mm-hmm. and we haven't really seen that impact in its totality yet this year. Rob? Uh, Javen Wright is up there for yep. sure. Um, I think starting Saturday, um, you're, you're, he's a guy that was already going to be a starter going into the season. And despite his latest setback is almost back to where he left off. So I think the stage is set for him to be a fixture on that defense going forward. Let's see uh, Fedoni. I mean, we always mention Fedoni. I mentioned him in part because I watched the Penn State tight end on Saturday against USC have 17 catches. Tyler Warren. <laughs> Tyler I mean, Warren. He's a high first round pick. 17 catches in one game. Okay. And I'm, I'm not suggesting that Nebraska try to use Fedoni like Tyler Warren, number 44 for Penn State. Um, but I, I, it does it did kind of run through my mind. Boy, the guy's got the guy's got 17 catches today, and Fedoni has 14 on the season. I think you, I do think you could use Fedoni a little bit more over the middle of the field. Just a little, not not a ton, but I'd like to see him get a little bit more involved. And I'm always gonna I'm always gonna say Carter Nelson. I I don't I think he's his explosion could be important. The, the big unknown on that, and there's always a there's always this gaping unknown, and that is what's happening in practice. We don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a gaping hole in our game that we just don't know what that looks like. What do you got next, Abby? Okay, which room has to be better to positively impact winning going forward? Offensive line, running backs, or wide receivers? Long snappers. <laughs> no, um, I think the running backs, if running they can back. get more productivity. Wow, you guys are on that on yeah. the same page on that. More pop. Yeah. yeah, more pop, more consistency. And I guess the offensive line plays hand-in-hand hand with that, but... I want to see these running backs turn three and four yard gains into 15 yard runs. You know, let's have more than five rushes of 15 yards from your running backs going forward over the second half of the season. Well, the two guys most likely to do that are Dowdell and Romare Johnson. I mean, those are the, those Not give Emmett, you the most... who has their longest run of the season. Yeah, I know. No, no, but, but those got Dowdell's got more explosion. I agree with you with any Dowdell. of the three and Romare's got more speed than any of the three. So I, that's how I'd look at that. I I go to the offensive line. I've just not seen the consistency up front. Um, I know. I think. I think you guys are more aligned with rule. Listening to rule, that's kind of a more of a running back issue. I have a hard time, uh, just from my vantage point, layman. It just doesn't look like they're moving people, especially like, late in games. Yeah, yeah. All right. What's next, Abby? Next one is the biggest key to victory against Indiana, Nebraska's defensive line play. If not, what's the biggest key? Oh, what is the biggest key? I think getting Rourke uncomfortable, forcing him into yep. bad decisions, if they can do that, with okay. whether it's pressure, whether it's coverage looks. Uh-huh. And with a bye week, they've had time to study and look. So you know Tony White, John Butler, and that crew, you would hope they're going to come out with a different look. Because he's a veteran. This is an older quarterback. How do you great, get great. how do you get him out of rhythm? See, you got to make him see colors. You don't want him to have clear shots at his guys. Um, I'm not necessarily you don't have to get to him all the time, but definitely have colors in his face. And I think that's that's critical. Abby, it's the defensive line, I think, is the big because I'm telling you, Charlotte does not have what Nebraska has up front. <laughs> Western do Illinois not. doesn't have Ty Robinson. FIU doesn't have not Jamari even UCLA. Butler. No, 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 they don't. They don't. But as but, what Indiana's strength is, offense. They're going to score. They're going to make plays. How much though? How much they going to? Well, that's the thing. Guess what? The offense, Nebraska's offense, need to do. They need to do some some explosive plays of their own. They need to be able to not just run the ball and get chunks on the ground. They need to hit some shots downfield. Yep. The passing game has been too dink and dunk for my liking. Like yep. I want to see some. Down the perimeter, guys making a 50 50 ball play and scoring touchdowns. We saw that earlier in the year. We need to get back to that for Nebraska to keep pace in a game like this. I'm always interested in the threshold of scoring. What what can Nebraska withstand from the opponent? Can if if Indiana scores 27, is that too much? That's what I don't know. I think if you get past 30, you're playing with fire yeah. if you're Nebraska. Okay. All right, okay. what do you got next, Abby? Next one. We're halfway through the season, so who's your pick for Heisman? 
mm. with Junty. Yeah. yeah well, Travis Hunter right? was there. Um, are you still a voter anymore? I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking about that last night. You got to ask the babber. Yeah, it's funny you ask because I don't, I can't remember if I am or not. Um, Ashton Junty, the Boise State running back, is averaging 9.9 .9 yards per carry. He's incredible. He's rushed for 1,200 plus yards already. Okay. He's on pace for 2,000 plus. That's Boise State. He's the best football player in the country. This definitely seems like the year where a quarterback's not going to win it. And, you know, it's hard to say, it could always change. But I think. feel like that. I just, I don't know. I mean, in, it, well, who would you say other than Travis Hunter, or like Ashton Jones? Could Ewers over the final stretch play his way into it? Could yeah. Carson Beck play himself back into it with a big finish? I mean, those are names within, and, you know, and Dylan Gabriel. I think Dylan Gabriel, yeah, he's in the conversation with what he showed. One hundred is on a ballot, right? You, you only get three votes. Yes, yeah, Jeremiah Smith, uh, probably a little bit outside looking in. The Ohio State receiver. Yeah. Yeah. He's really good, though. I would say Hunter is still on a lot of ballots. Yeah, right now, I think... I is think Hunter if, out, though? How long is he out for? I don't know. If if it's the voting were to take place today, I think the Boise State running back would win the highs. And especially, like, you can say what you want. He's from Boise State, whatever. But guess what he did against Oregon? 25 carries for 192 yards and three touchdowns. 7.7 .7 yards per carry against one of the best teams in college football. Yeah, he's real. He's say real. no more. He's Frank, by the way, talking to Frank about him. Solich, who, by the way, I I don't Frank think there's the ever Frank. A, be, a better uh, running backs coach. I mean, think about the guys he had, the guys he coached, Mike Rozier, Amon Green, Lawrence Phillips, Clinton Child, everybody. We got it. He says Junty is exactly what we would have looked for. Hello, because because of the because of the combination of power and speed and instincts, he's got it, everything. All right, final question. If you were a teacher, what subject would you teach? Do we throw journalism out the window? Because that's like too yeah, automatic. I can't teach any of that. <laughs> that was a loaded <laughs> statement. But I, uh, the, uh, year, the, year, the yearbook advisor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. What, what would it be, Sean? You're starting I'd, off. I'd probably go with history. Really? I can see you being a history teacher. I like history. I mean, I don't know. I mean, PEs and e weights and PE, like those are Wait. obviously... They have weight weights. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, weight, weight training. I had a double period weight training class. Oh look at look at you. Jeez. <laughs> Senior year, baby. <laughs> what would you teach? I like this question, by the way. So Thank my you. wife's a high school teacher, and she teaches in the family consumer science department, which used to kind of be known as home ec, but it's kind of evolved into this really broad spectrum where it's a little bit of everything. It's psychology. It's child development. It's uh, there's culinary stuff i'd probably do that because it's probably the most life skills yeah subject you know because i can't teach math like no i would fail no. kids out of school if i taught yeah. math english is what it is so i would go with something where i could have some variety and teach things that are actually going to make kids better people than just good test takers simple what's your subject you haven't even gave us what you're trying to get out of it no i'd probably go psychology because it, it the psychology classes in college freaked me out <laughs> I mean, they were what? so weird. Um, like all the tests and like no, trials just, they did or whatever. Uh, just the, come on, think about the weirdness of, of that, of, of what you learned in psychology. It was just odd. And it, I, I think it would keep me on my toes it, it's, oh, yeah. instead of bore me. I took a, high, a class in high school called construction. And okay. we built, we came up with plans and we built like a garage. Did, <laughs> did and. You? And I don't know how we did it because you, you only had the one period a day, but you did. It. You know, we got behind schedule, and the seniors graduated early. And the teachers were like, "Look, any seniors that want to come back the next couple of weeks and work on it, you get an automatic A." That's pretty cool. And so we, but we built in the the garage. It's you know right on Forty Eighth and Giles and Omaha. It's still there. Like, That's pretty the garage, sweet. We and we built it. It was kind of cool. You I'm know? kind of envious of you for that. That's pretty cool. I had a shop teacher that would like just put on a movie about like how to i guess it was the it was auto the auto mechanic class and wow. he put on a movie about how to change a tire and then just like sleep at his desk that's <laughs> what i would do i'd like to do that i'd like to do that I'm just i would be bad at it well, shop were, class i just see so bad yeah, he's put on a movie there, there were guys screwing around like any high school class and, and the teacher just lost it he goes you know it's just a shame that you guys can't take this serious because more than likely this is what you're going to be doing someday <laughs> <laughs> like, that was 
That's hardcore. Things you can say in the late 90s, early yeah. 2000s. Of, Could you get away with that? RLS, no, baby. No. You can't say anything. You can't else. do that now? No. Yeah, you get canceled. God. I don't know. It was, it was real talk, though. It was well, in. Oh, trust me. I mean, think about my age. It was real talk. Oh, yeah. I got real talk to. Well, uh, <laughs> we got the shit. We built the garage, though. It's still standing. That's a good job, Sean. It's good craftsmanship.